Hello, and thank you for joining our webinar on the Wisconsin Broadband Expansion Grant Program. My name is Chris Salemi, and I'm the Government Affairs Liaison for Airspan Networks. I will be kicking things off by walking you through the highlighting program's requirements and benchmarks. And then we'll hand it over to my colleagues, Troy Conley and our general manager, Jamie Fink, president of technology, who will provide background on our solutions and technology. To start, I'll provide you some background on the program itself. In November of 2021, Wisconsin Governor Evers announced the state will make a $100 million available as part of a new round of grants to expand broadband internet statewide. The Public Service Commission is now accepting applications for this grant for fiscal year 2022. The purpose of the Broadband Expansion Grant Program is to encourage the deployment and advanced telecommunications capability in unserved areas of the state. The $100 million in grant funds for this round will come from bond proceeds authorized by the Wisconsin Building Commission. The application window will close on March 17, 2022. We'll start with program requirements. Applicants must fall within one of the following three applicant categories. An organization operated for profit or not for profit, including a cooperative that includes an indigenous nation or tribe located within the state. A telecommunications utility. A city, village, town, or county that is entered into a partnership with an eligible organization or telecommunications utility and for the purposes of eligibility for a broadband expansion grant. For an area to be considered eligible for a grant, it must be considered underserved. Underserved is an area served by fewer than two providers offering broadband service. Broadband service, the definition is 25 megabits per second download and three megabits per second upload speeds the FCC's minimum broadband speed requirements. Unserved is an area priority factor described in the application's contents and scoring section. Data mapping and mapping resources. This will be a vital piece of the application process. To start on the data mapping area, a geospatial file of your proposed project must be emailed to the Public Service Commission by the application due date, which again is March 17, 2022. Data may be submitted in various formats. Please keep that in mind. Data will be used in mapping tools to evaluate the impact of proposed projects. And if the project area lies within a census block designated to, as served on the PCS broadband map, the applicant must provide additional documentation to demonstrate the actual broadband service that is available in the proposed project area. Turning to mapping resources, while we try to provide you a detailed snapshot of the program in this webinar, uh, we do encourage you to visit the Public Service Commission and Wisconsin Broadband Office website for more information. There they have uh, a number of links to access their broadband maps, which are important as you start to pull together your network designs. And for further questions on the grant application process itself, content or program administration, please visit PCS State Broadband Office at wisconsin.gov. Budget categories. Contractual consultant fees all fall into the budget categories. And what does that mean exactly? All project expenses for work, materials performed by a third party contractor fall under budget categories. Moving to equipment, equipment is an item with acquisition costs greater than $5,000. Supplies, acquisition of costs greater than $5,000. Supplies are generally consumed during project period. Labor, salary and fringe also falls under this category. So that we're, we're looking at exactly as labor expenses, including fringe benefits of the grant manager and an ISP or telco, even if the ISP or telco is not the owner of the infrastructure, fringe factors and other direct labor costs that are attributable to the project are allowable. Moving on to permitting and the permitting process. Permitting is basically licensing fees 
all permitting and licensing fees and expenses are allowed. Travel. Grantees travel expenses related to the project, including travel expenses of an ISP, telco, regardless of whether the ISP and or telco is, is or isn't the owner of the infrastructure is allowed. Other areas, expenses associated with integrating affordability options, internet access, or digital literacy. And again, if you are looking for a more detailed background on some of these, please visit the websites. Let's jump through to the timeline now, staying on the same slide. To start, December 1st, 2021, was the date of the issue of the application instructions. Fast forwarding to February 15th, 2022, is the last day for submitting questions and requests for clarification to PCS. March 17th is our big date. Again, 4 p.m. Central Time, applications are due from the applicant. Moving forward to April, April 14th is the last day for submitting an objection to a grant application. April 21st, 2022 is the last day for submitting a response to an objection. Content and scoring. The Commission's grant award decision-making consists of five items. They are grant applications, comments of interested persons in support as part of the application, opposition to one or more specific applications, ranking of the grant applications prepared by a preliminary evaluation committee will take place, and then a discussion memo prepared by the commission staff will take place. Commission meets in an open session to discuss the record and will decide which applications should be awarded grants. That is the process here. Here's what the broadband grant program requires the commission to give priority to. Applications that include any of the seven factors listed in the statute. So, more scoring priorities. Here's what we're looking at in the commission. Matching funds, 10 points. Unserved area, 15 points. Scalability, five points. Will not delay broadband service in adjacent areas. So again, no delays, that is five points. And then a public-private partnerships, if there are any, 10 points. Project impact overall is 15 points. And then economic impact overall, 10 points. With that, that includes my portion of these slides uh, for this webinar um, in the presentation. I will now turn things over to my colleague, Troy Conley, who will talk about solutions and technologies. And again, I just wanna thank you for joining us and we hope that you found this informative. Hi, my name is Troy Connolly. I'm the general manager of North America for Airspan Networks. I'm kind of a newbie. I've been here about two years now, a little over two years. Uh, I've been in telecommunications my entire career. I started on the copper and fiber side of the house, and I've only been in the wireless side for about the last 10 years. But I love being on the wireless because I see where wireless technology is right now. It's basically where copper and fiber was in the mid to late 90s as it's continuing to mature and evolve and and the products get smaller and the costs go down but the speeds get higher you know just in in the last 10 years in wireless we've seen speeds you know go up by a factor of 100 almost on on the wireless products so a lot of people don't know a whole lot about airspan uh, we we haven't really done a lot in the mass market in the U.S., we've basically focused on large customers and, and built custom products for them. But with CBRS, that gave us a mass market product for the uh, uh, for the U.S. And it's interesting that we're actually the fourth largest LTE uh, wireless provider in the world. We're not we're behind Ericsson, Nokia, and Huawei. But other than that, we're the fourth largest provider in the world. Uh, we're a big company. And most importantly, I think particularly for these applications, we're U.S. based. So that carries a lot of weight when you're applying for things. Uh, we'll talk about 4G and 5G today. We'll talk about unlicensed PTP and PMP products, uh, kind of the way it would fit into these bids that, uh, that you're going to make to get this money and show you what we have. It's not going to be a, a high, it's not going to be a big sales presentation. I've only got a couple slides, what we wanted to have Chris talk about, 
is the most important part of this, but I'll just show you where we think our products fit into this, uh, your application process. You know, as much as wireless has evolved, physics are physics. You're not gonna get a, a, a wireless signal through a mountain and you're not gonna get it through dense trees. And that's, you know, we understand that. We have, and that's why we have a couple of product lines. We'll talk about an unlicensed product line next. Uh, that's the Mimosa side of the house. Airspan bought Mimosa a little over two years ago to complement the product line. Um, Airspan had a, a fantastic and has a fantastic 4G product line. And we'll be introducing our 5G ORAN systems towards the end of this year. But to get a, comp a fully comprehensive wireless package, that's when Mimosa came into the, to the fold here. Uh, what we have for this, for your more uh, in-loss, your non-line of sight type applications, we have our 4G LTE products. Uh, we have different sizes of product. Uh, we have the, our Air Harmony uh, mini macro systems. We've got an Air Speed line. That's our small cell systems. Uh, we have these in band 48. So if you're going to be deploying in CBRS, you know we have a, a model for you in band 48. And particularly if you're going after the tribal areas, the tribal areas are all band 41. Uh, we have an air harmony system that works in the band 41 as well. So you can serve 2.5 gigahertz. And for those of you who are more cable company oriented, we also have a strand mounted system that you can mount on the strand that can be fed either with fiber or with DOCSIS. So we have a complete product line and, and I'm not gonna go into the, the, um, the inside products, but we have LTE products for the enterprise as well. So we've got a full suite and these products work best in the near and non-line of sight type applications because of the way that they, they perpetuate. Chris brought up a point on one of the early slides. You know, I, I think your, your bid is going to be best when it's cost effective, a lot better than it will be if you're gonna take fiber all the way out there. Now, like I said, I started my career on the fiber side of the house. Certainly that is the, the be all end all for delivering high speed broadband. But at the end of the day, you still gotta cut the ground or you still gotta hang it somewhere. And it's expensive to take it out, particularly in these really rural areas. And products like this, like the, the Airspan LTE products and the Mimosa, uh, point to multi-point fixed wireless access products offers a cost-effective alternative to having to take fiber out there. And, and I would almost take exception uh, to say, you know, what, what was the government said that it's gotta be future-proof. I mean, you know, when we deliver a hundred meg out of a tower to a, to a home, I mean, that's about as future-proof as you're gonna get. You can do it, you know, you can hang those things on a tower and in a, a matter of weeks and not have to, you know, have to dig through the earth to be able to get fiber out there. So we think it's a good cost-effective solution. It meets the requirements uh, of what the government's looking for in this, and it gives you, you know, a competitive advantage by being cost-effective. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to, we're going to try to make sure that this isn't too much of a company pitch, so to speak, but we've been helping uh, a lot of different ISPs in a number of states, and we've been quite successful in guiding the the selection process and the in optimizing our solutions for scoring. So I'm going to really try to focus more on the kinds of things that we know that, that states are prioritizing. Um, obviously, every state's a little different. Let's talk a little bit about the fixed wireless solutions. So um, as a whole, if you look at the kinds of things we can do with our unlicensed fixed wireless and some of our microwave technologies, this is really all about delivering bandwidth, high amounts of bandwidth rapidly to locations that are hard to reach. Uh, so when we are dealing with rural areas, the reason most of these areas have not been built out yet is likely because there's not fiber um, in those areas or towers that necessarily have fiber either. So you're in a situation oftentimes where we need to rapidly deploy capacity into an area anywhere from a mile away out to 30, 40 miles away potentially. And in those scenarios, wireless is a great solution to be able to do that rapidly. Um, today, we, we'll, we'll talk about some, some different speeds that we can achieve with this mid-mile and backhaul, but uh, 
safe to say we already do one and a half gigabit backhauls and we've been doing that for years and we also are on the cusp of three and a half gigabit uh, speeds coming soon um, with some of these technologies. So as Chris said, you know, you're going to be maturing some of those speeds over the next couple of years. Uh, you're going to get to 100 on 100 by, uh, by the end of the timeline. It's important to be able to have the capacity to be able to handle some of those solutions and our backhaul solutions absolutely can do that. Um, now, on the point to multipoint front, obviously, this is a base station talking to many CPE, uh, many clients on your network. And we've been doing this for quite some time and, and delivering today, in many cases, 250 megabits down, 100 megabits up. So this is ready already for your 100, 100 needs. You would easily be able to achieve these in the 5 gigahertz and coming soon our 6 gigahertz spectrum that we'll talk about in a moment. And this is great because it allows us to be able to very at a cost effective no spectrum cost uh, approach and using more off the shelf technologies which we we have all of the intellectual property source control etc over we're taking advantage of commercialized chip technology from the wi-fi industry but making it work in a carrier grade fashion and that's important because as as we speak now the fcc is in the process of opening the new six gigahertz band the six gigahertz band is going to be the gigabit band as i like to call it because we're going to be able to deliver larger channels and gigabit speeds to customers that's going to be really attractive from an efficiency perspective cost per unit and rurality you can reach all these areas but you also can deliver fiber speeds that's really interesting because it's not going to take years and high efficiency cost uh, so or low efficiency cost i should say so i think that the point to multi-point technologies right now are, are, are more interesting than ever to look at um, it's evolved greatly since many of you may have tried some of the technology in the early days. Um, we're already meeting all the requirements, even with our current technology, but the new technology that comes out in the beginning of 2022 and the band is opening up in mid-2022 with the FCC, um, we'll be able to deploy now and start to add on those other speeds within the next six to nine months, which I think is a great, great achievement. Uh, and it's really going to keep these proposals for you looking a lot more attractive so you'll be able to rapidly deploy the speeds out to your customer base and I think look much more efficient and much more rural than you would be able to do over a much longer timeline with the fiber technologies, of course. I touched on this briefly, but we wanted to reiterate probably the most useful tool in the toolbox uh, for many of the ISPs that we deal with. And like, like I mentioned, you're dealing, going to be dealing with a lot of locations that are needed to serve uh, areas that fiber already is not in place, even at towers or new tower sites that, that may need to be built. And that is best achieved with point-to-point -point wireless technology. It's extremely affordable and is very flexible in distance. And especially when you're in rural areas, there's very little to no noise that you're going to be encountering. So you don't have to worry about expensive microwave solutions. Um, you can take advantage of some of these un un underutilized, unlicensed bands. Um, this is technology we've been working on for years. Even some of our largest carriers in the world on the mobile side are using us as their reliable backhaul solution uh, for using unlicensed technology. And I, I, that's been an incredible achievement for us to be able to take this really cost-effective, high-speed disruptive technology and even put it into the backhaul of mobile networks. And I think that's a testament to the carrier-grade mentality that we now are able to achieve with this technology to be able to put that into mobile and also you know, feeding other broadband networks with these speeds. So as you can see, the distances that we're dealing with here are up to 30 plus miles. We, we have links in places of 50, 60 miles in some cases where we need to down to across the street. Sometimes you just need to get across a parking lot and that solves the problem. And to be able to do that at you know, under a couple hundred dollars for 700, 700 megabits as an example, that's pretty incredible to be able to do that today and not have to worry about doing a fiber build. So sometimes you just need to pick the best solution that gets you there. And most of these speeds are well above what the FCC and the folks are going to look at when it comes down to different speed tiers, you know, being 25.3 and eventually up to 100, 100 and beyond. And you're gonna be able to achieve the and beyond category with this um, as a result of that. So hopefully we've been able to give you a bit of a broad education of some of the key components to what what's necessary to deploy based on the kinds of guidelines and, and scoring um, system. Thank you, everybody. I much appreciate your joining. That will conclude Jamie and Troy's portion of our presentation. And again, we want to thank you for joining us today. To contact us, Airspan Networks, 
please do so at broadband at airspan.com. And if you're interested in reaching out to PCS, please visit wisconsin.gov's website. We have that attached as well. Thank you again. We look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.